sometimes it seems like all I do is fix stuff and like what I really want to do today is go to Kings Island and ride a roller coaster but I just got this van all finished up got to get the uh, invoice done get the owner to pick it up I got somebody that wants to bring a Yukon over I got a Suburban I need to go take a look at a transmission on uh, my AC compressor decided to blow up and my AC condenser has a leak on my car so that's coming up on the driveway next um, man it never ends it never ends but it's good money <laughs> here on the front of the fan so sweater back in here you can even see it over here see that uh, pulley right there it's been splashing up right there down in here you can see it glowing all the little bright spots are glowing green so I was like well if you look it's on the belt it's on that pulley yeah, that's the AC compressor down there just leaking like crazy so that front seals went on the AC compressor. And I was like, hmm. So I just took a quick look at the condenser oh, right here. And if you look, that's glowing green as well, right here in this top corner. And I thought, well, maybe that's splashed up in here from, uh, you know, just that pulley. And I mean, that spot is kind of in line with it. But then I came over to the other side of the vehicle. And I looked down in here. And I can see some green down in here. And then when I came and I look right here, I see more green up in this corner. Right there. And right here is the big leak right up in here so this thing has lost a condenser and an AC compressor all right so we're out here but you can see I can see the dying without UV light right there where that condenser has been leaking all down here in this corner and it's been leaking over in this corner too to see the moisture on it there so the front clips off we're gonna get this done I've always had this one headlight that's hard to get adjusted down far enough, and I'm looking. This thing's been in a front end collision. You can just tell by these spot welds. I mean, it's been done really well, but that's been worked on right there. That's a little bent. If you compare that to the spot welds on this side that are real nice, you can tell those were done by a robot. <laughs> so that's probably why that headlight's always a little wonky on this side. It's been in a collision. All right. Good enough, we'll go ahead and get this condenser out. I've got my new condenser here, my new compressor there. So, yeehaw. All right, so the old condenser's out. It's laying over there. So, these uh, clips are pretty, or they're in plastic, and those bolts were pretty seized. This one did turn sideways. Still plenty of meat there. I went ahead and wire brushed off the bolts real good. So they should go back in there. Spray them with some of the good stuff there. Um, and we'll get that all put back in. You can see where that condenser's been leaking all down in here. You can see the yellow dye right there. So we'll do that. And then we'll get the compressor in. Back her down. And then I got a bunch of other stuff to do to this thing. I need to replace the air filters. I need to do the uh, uh, instrument cluster again. The speedometer's going, going wonky. But uh, I want to get this together. I got to go to Michigan and ride coasters next week. So.
All right, so um, a lot of compressors, like especially new ones from you know, OEM compressors, will come pre-charged with PAG oil in them. However, this cheap eBay one says this compressor is shipped dry, no oil. So we've got to add oil. So we're replacing our condenser. I'm not doing the receiver dryer. Sure, I should. I'm not. <clears throat> and uh, then I'm replacing the compressor. So the compressor is two and a half ounces, and a condenser uh, replacement without the receiver dryer is one ounce. So we need to add three and a half ounces to this uh, system of oil. Now, the way I like to do this is just go ahead and measure out the oil and add it to the compressor then I'll put the little rubber plugs back in and then we'll put it uh, up in the car uh, that way if I tip it putting it in it doesn't spill out but I just go ahead and measure it out put it in the compressor what I need and then we're good to go so um, we're looking at two and a half ones three and a half we'll zero the scale zero zero come on zero there we go. So now start pouring. There's two. There's three. And a half. So now we'll put that in this compressor and all I do here is just, you know, put my funnel in. Sometimes you got to turn it a little to get it to go down in there if it doesn't want to go. That's fine. We'll just stick that in there and add it real slow. I cleaned this funnel out really well. Now she's got oil in her. Just a quick note. Um, if, uh, if you're a YouTuber and you're tired of being super hot uh, when you're making videos because you can't run a big fan like that or nobody can hear you, uh, you can get an old furnace blower. This is an old 110 volt furnace blower. The date on the motor was 1946. I put a new wires on it because they were all frayed. But it's actually got little oil ports right there. But uh, get you an old furnace blower like this. Set it up with the squirrel cage. It's very quiet and it actually moves a lot of air. And a lot of times you can have a little air moving while you're making videos. They don't give you this stud on the new compressor. Looks like it's uh, e torques of some kind. Let's see if I got the right bit. I'm an idiot. So, hang on. So the receiver dryer on this comes built on the condenser. So, that's fine. My new one came with one. Um, but that just means I got to put another ounce of oil in it. <laughs> 
so let me do that. All right, I gave up trying to put it in through there. I'm just gonna just took this line loose. I'm just gonna dump it in there so I don't spill anymore. I went ahead and added like another 0.2 ounces, which is what I'm estimating I spilled. Just gotta try to get it as close as you can. These little tiny Harbor Freight funnels come in handy. Go ahead and put our valve stem back in. All right, we go ahead and get this thing back and down while I fight with that serpentine belt. All right, well. draw a vacuum and I'll probably let that go for a half hour 45 minutes and then we'll close it off and wait another half hour 45 minutes to make sure it holds. All right so she's been holding the vacuum for well over an hour now uh, so I'm ready to go ahead I've got the vacuum pump already unplugged. It's gonna break this hose right here. Probably still a little vacuum like this too. Now I gotta put my can tap on. This holds like 21 ounces, two cans to 12. By the time you take it to the loss that what's left in the can, and the in the line, it's probably about ready. Make sure that's tight. Everything's tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead. These are the cans with the valve. Go ahead and add refrigerant. Go ahead and open up the low side. And we'll go ahead and start the car. These cans with the little valve in them that you don't hear, so they take a little longer. kicked on it's coming on down. So this can's pretty much empty. I'm going to that. going to lose a little bit of this pressure that's left in the can. I'm not sure about that. Not much though.
nice thing about these, I guess, is with that valve, when you let it go, it's a one-way valve. So the theory is you can put part of the hand in and take your tap off and it'll stay. Rather than the pins and the tears. I don't know, it helps hold this what's left in here, in here, but I mean, I just throw them in the trash anyway, so I don't know. It's about 83, 84 degrees. And we're running 36 or 7 on the low side. And we're running just over 200 on the high side. It's perfect. Alright, we'll go ahead and let my uh, pressures equalize. Uh, I'll go ahead and disconnect the low side early on. Just because you lose less refrigerant that way. And the low side cap. And I'll uh, equalize when the low side comes down. Yeah, you have to change the furnace filters in your house. Well, your car has filters too. A lot of people forget about these. But they do need to be changed once in a while. Alright, so just uh, kind of an update. The Equinox is done, AC works great. Went ahead, rotated the tires, went ahead, changed the oil, uh, went ahead, fixed the instrument cluster, replaced the stepper and the speedometer. Um, the only thing left to really do on that guy is the back door lock that I replaced. The door handles quit working. It goes down and it clips into this plastic piece that holds that. And that plastic piece can just come loose. So I gotta tear the door panel off at some point. That's not a real huge concern for me right now. It's a back door. When my son gets in, if he uses that door, I just open it from the inside. And so um, I had another customer come over. He also has a Chevy Equinox uh, 05. I, I don't. It, they bought this car like yeah, less than a year ago. And I mean, I went all through it. Ball joints were good. Axles look good. Drove great no noises and I, I don't know like every vehicle they have they just tear the suspension out of them which is crazy but it's it needs definitely a ball joint on one side it's only like a little bit more to just get both lower control arms uh, it's got an axle tore out of it on the driver's side and the struts are leaking all their oil out in the front so I got a quote together for that one it's going to be coming up I've got this uh, Yukon Denali that had all the electrical problems that I fixed last weekend. It's in my driveway. It's got a hanging brake caliper. Um, and you can definitely tell where that one rotor where it's been hanging is pitted and it's been hot. Um, it's they're, they're the lifetime warranty one. So they want to see if uh, we can get advanced to exchange them out. We're going to try that. Um, AutoZone is always real good about doing it. I don't know. Advanced can be kind of weird. Um, and so and then it's got a real bad shaking uh, when you get up around 70 miles an hour but I really think the shaking is seems more like it's coming from the back um, it almost seems like it might have a bent wheel or a bad tire but I'm gonna get the brakes fixed on it and check see if it's just the hose if it's not just the hose and we'll replace the caliper go ahead and replace rotors and pads on the front and then we'll take it for a shimmy and see and uh, still got some more air AC units to fix. I got a Suburban that's not shifting and going into gear right to go take a quick look at tomorrow. So things are busy, busy weekends. And you know, I spend most of my day working on parts. And when it gets cooler in the evenings, I come out here, look up parts, try to get some quotes together. Uh, the van that I just got done working on is going to come back at some point. Uh, we were thinking next weekend, but I don't know. I'm going to be in Michigan Friday and Saturday, so uh, riding coasters, so probably not next weekend. But uh, um, I got to get some pricing together for him. 
uh, but it's got one of the brake lines is rusted out and needs replaced and um, it's got uh, bad ball joints on the driver's side so it's never ending um, I'd much rather do diagnostic work because it, you just don't have to get as dirty or do as much work but I'll take any work I can get if there's money in it so all right I'll talk to y'all later it's Tom your frugal prepper have a good time